All right. Thank you to everyone who is attending and welcome to Book Buzz. My name is Betty McDowell and I'm here with Jermaine Burleson and Meg Miller. And we'll be sharing adult fiction, nonfiction and graphic novel, novel titles with you. If you haven't checked out our summer reading program page, please take a look at it. We have an adult summer reading challenge going on right now. So you can track all of your books that you've read from June 6th to July 31st. And at the end of the summer, you get a prize bag and you can see our pin right there. That's one of the prizes that you'll get in the bag. If you're missing browsing the shelves, please take a look at our catalog and go to the what's hot section. Under book list, you can see all the new titles that we've checked out and place reserves. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Shermaine, who's going to be covering adult fiction. Okay, so um, this has already come out. But June 9th, so this is a cross between Bridget Jones' Diary and Crazy Rich Asians. So Andrea Tang is a Chinese-Malaysian uh, woman who is trying to get her family to not focus on her being 30 and still not married and dating Mr. Wright for her family, but being in love with her rival at work. She's a successful lawyer and she has all these friends great um, condo and all these things, but her family is still like, when are you going to get married? Right. Um, so now she's just trying to figure out, can she please everybody and herself at the same time? So it's a really interesting, really, really fun for the summer. Um, the secret women is about these three women who meet at yoga and each of them have in common that their mother has passed away and they have to go through their mother's things. And, so they find all these letters and diaries from their mothers and they realize after meeting over margaritas and having fun and being support for themselves that their mothers didn't really have that. And so doing these difficult times and finding women you can trust, it's about the power of friendship and family and unconditional love. And that came out on the 9th of June as well. Party of Two is... Um, another really good book by Jasmine Guillory. <clears throat> and so she writes really, really great fiction about many, many different things. Um, but this book is about Olivia Monroe. Um, she moves from New York to L.A. to start a firm with her best friend. And she meets this guy in a hotel bar and they talk about desserts and all kinds of random things. And they really like each other. And then she finds out that he's a junior senator. And so she didn't, really doesn't want to date a politician until he sends her big chocolate cake to her office. Because she said chocolate cake was her favorite. So she was like, ah. So she becomes interested and they have to do all these clandestine disguises and like all these different things. Um, and in L.A. of all places, trying to be um, discreet and inconspicuous. But when they do go public, people start trying to dig up her past and all these different things. And... She has to really think about whether she wants to be in the spotlight and they both have to think about what a relationship would be like together. So that came out the 23rd. Um, Kevin Kwan has come out again. Um, the author of Crazy Rich Asians has come out again with a book called Sex and Vanity. So this is about um, a Chinese born um well, um, it's about a, an American girl who is half Chinese and half English. Um, her mother is American Chinese born. Um, and she meets this guy who she totally is like, I shouldn't like him because like he's Asian, like silly her. But they have really great chemistry. And then she meets him again when she has her um, is about to get married and he's trying to move into her building and she's trying to keep him out because. Of course, she's crazy attracted to him. She's about to get married. How dare he try to move in their building and be all sexy, right? So this is just about um, all of those things. And it's like a, um, a modern love story. And it's pretty cool. And of course, all the views and things that you got from Crazy Rich, A Rich Asians, you'll probably um, see like reading in the book and different things like that. So it's a similar um, story but it's pretty cool. So he's um, writing new things and going on and that kind of vibe, but in the East Hamptons in you know, Fifth Avenue type. Mexican Gothic, I'm really excited about that comes out on June 20th because it's kind of like if Jane Eyre was set in Mexico in the 1950s, but except 
so uh, you're not Jane Eyre and you're coming to rescue her, if that makes sense. Um, and it will if you do read it. And so um, Naomi is like this debutante and all these different things. Um, and she's going to rescue her cousin. Her father promises her she can go to university like she can actually go to college if she figures out if her if her cousin is crazy or not. And that's where everything kind of snowballs and takes off. So she goes to the countryside where they don't have telephones or anything to try to see if she can figure out if her cousin is actually like going crazy since she's been married or if there's something really to all of this. So that's, I'm excited about that. I'm actually reading an arc of that now. Um, Love Bites is a queer romance between a vampire and a... Um, recent divorcee. So Chloe gets divorced and um, it's been two years after the divorce and her aunt asked her to go out and, you know, just kind of like live a little. So she goes to this goth club and um, she meets this astronomy PhD student named Angela. And so they like each other a lot. And so she can see a future, but Angela can only come out at night she doesn't feel cold and she doesn't eat and she doesn't have a pulse and she has sharp teeth. So, of course, they're meant to be together. <laughs> but um, I'll just decide. Like, it's just trying to how do you build a life when one of you is already dead is an understatement. But it's a good, fun read if you are into vampires and fiction like that. Um, Some Go Home is a really... um. I wouldn't say tough read, but it's a, it can be a heavy read because this is a debut novel. And um, these three generations in um, this made up town in Mississippi. So basically um, this uh, war veteran, like Iraq war veteran comes back home and she's pregnant with twins and she's trying to deal with all these different things. And her husband's father was tried for a civil rights era murder. And she's having to deal with that and her twins coming and like, you know, raising kids in this type of turmoil with this type of family. But there's like questions about like his guilt and all these things about class and race are tied into this town and into their family. And so it's it's a really explosive uh, depiction of like the American South and cultural legacy and what you leave your family and those types of things. This is one of my favorite authors. And if you like Southern food and recipes and a little murder thrown in, this is your book. Um, there's actually a series and this is the latest in the series and it's called Murder with Honey Ham Biscuits. And there is a honey ham biscuit recipe in there. And so if you're interested, definitely there's always recipes in there. But uh, Mahalia or Halia, as she's called, has this um, famous soul food restaurant and um, one Food Network channel tries to come in and ask her to be like a guest judge. Like she's actually like third or fourth choice. But she was like, yeah, it'd be good publicity for me. And they offer her like $5,000 for two days or whatever. And then somebody ends up dead. And it was one of the front runners who's having an affair with one of the judges. Surprise. Um, but she's ha like inadvertently helping the police solve a murder. So they didn't ask for her help, but she's giving it anyway. And their recipes included and um, a lot of depictions about um, Maryland and the D.C. area if you're interested. So it was, it's a really good read. I actually read it, but this is coming out July 28th. The kids are going to ask. So this book by Gretchen Anthony is actually about some twins who are curious about who their biological father is. And they start a podcast called the kids are going to ask and to discover the truth. And then they find out by interviewing people in their mother's past that Things may not be as they seem or, or what they thought, but it becomes really popular with other people kind of like asking questions. And it's a coming age story and a depiction about like going from lost to found and finding where you are, you know, all those types of things, all the feels. But this is what it's about. And um, not spoiler alert, but they do find him. So that's another thing that kind of makes what they thought not seem like what it is or whatever. So that's a good thing or a bad thing. Just depends. But yeah. 
The Start of Us by Hannah Emery that comes out July 31st is about a woman who actually has powers to slip in between time. So she meets this guy named Daniel and they seem perfect together. And so she's trying to get back to um, the world where he's in and the time that he's in to see if they can, you know, like make a go of it. But what if she has to lose like the happiness of like today and the day that she's in and the time that she's in at a chance to like live another life? And would you take it if you knew that the good day or whatever kind of day you were having, you would lose that just for this opportunity that may not work out. So that's kind of like what's going on with them. So if you got the chance, even knowing that you could lose something in the time or past that you're in, would you? So that's about them. You had me at Ola. So this um, comes out August 4th. So this is a rom-com set in telenovela. So basically two telenovela act, uh, actor and actress um, are starring in this bilingual telenovela and um, they're trying to get their careers off and like <laughs> um, deal with scandals, get rid of scandals and all the other kind of stuff. But they're each kind of questioning if what they're doing is real or if it's like orchestrated or made up. So like imagine trying to fall in love and you're actually in drama and trying to get away from drama and creating drama. So that's what this is about. And I'm excited for this. If you've ever seen soap operas and like wanted to like know like what the behind the scenes might be like, this is a good read for that. A Saint from Texas is about two twins and one decides to become a nun and the other decides to become like a grand dame of like Parisian society. So she becomes really, really big. And the other one becomes a nun at a Colombian convent. And they're from East Texas. They're born in East Texas Prairie. And all these dramatic events kind of like not tear them apart, but push them in different directions. So it's about that life and um, how that unfolds over the decades from like the 50s um, to the um, fairly recent past. Love After Love. So Love After Love is about, um, it's based in Trinidad and it's about these three people who decide to make a family of themselves. And um, all these secrets come out and the son decides to move to New York to carve out an existence in another life. And he becomes an undocumented immigrant. And so the Mr. Cheatham, who is he worked with his mom and he ends up moving in with them, but they became like a little family kind of keeps them tethered together. So um, it's written in a lot of, um, you know, like Trinidadian slang or accent or those types of things. Um, but it's easy to read still. And it it's about like the obligations of family, consequences of the choice you made and like how we love and who we love. Little Deadly Secrets is about three friends who are really more in each other's lives and business than they really should be. And a murder happens and mistakes happen. And so is it going to tear them apart or not? So it's one of those things of how involved in your life of other people or your friends are you? And is that a good thing or isn't it? But they're best friends. So we'll see. When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. The, the great thing about Alyssa Cole is that she writes historical fiction. She writes romantic fiction. She writes sci-fi. She writes thrillers. So if you don't like one thing, you'll like something else. So she basically starts walking tours to preserve um, her. Um, Cindy Green, excuse me, is like a, a woman who has these walking tours in her little Brooklyn neighborhood to try to preserve um, the little suburb part of her little neighborhood um but or the suburban urban part of her neighborhood and there are a lot of families who decided to leave and move to the suburbs you know just to start a new life but she meets this guy named Theo and he's helping her with these tours and they start to suspect that a lot of people didn't move to the suburbs as they originally said they did and gentrification is pushing everybody out but where are these people going what's happening and are they going to disappear too if they find out what's really happening 
So um, it's not just about gentrification. It's also about like, um, you know, conspiracy. Um, who can you trust? What happens when things start expanding or modernizing too fast or not fast enough? Those types of things. But it is a thriller. Set My Heart to Fire um, is going to be out September 1st. So this is about um, a guy named Jared. Um, and he works in Michigan and he's a dentist. But there's one thing about him is that there was human DNA that was created with a robot to make him appear as a real person, but he's not. So one day he's watching this movie and doing things as um, androids or, you know, humanoid bots do. And he starts crying and he's confused because he's not supposed to have emotions. And usually when this happens, the bot or whatever will be reset and all these different things. So he has all these emotions and he's determined to make these real connections and be a real boy type thing. And he wants to find his mother, um, the programmer who created him. And he wants to write screenplays and change the world. And he wants to be more than a dentist. And so he wants to fall in love and all these different things. So it's about what makes us human. And it's supposed to be as the um, author claims, a love letter to outsiders everywhere. Um, so that is what that's about. And so hopefully you can find some type of, if you like this type of genre, find some kind of uh, peace and feel like you're not such an outsider after reading it. So that is it. Thank you for your time. And if you have any questions about anything, um, those should be ordered pretty soon. A lot of them have already been ordered um, and they'll be ready. So I'm going to go ahead and cover nonfiction, and we're going to start with memoirs and biographies. The first one is Wandering in Strange Lands, a daughter of the Great Migration reclaims her roots. Between 1960 and 1970, six million Black Americans left their rural homes in the South for jobs in cities in the Northwest and Midwest in a movement known as the Great Migration. But while this event transformed the complexion of America and provided Black people with new economic opportunities, it also disconnected them from their roots, their land, and their sense of identity. In this fascinating and deeply personal exploration, Jenkins recreates her ancestors' journeys across America, following the migratory routes they took from Georgia and South Carolina to Louisiana, Oklahoma, and California. Incisive as in Wandering in Strange Lands is a timely and enthralling look at America's past and present, one family's legacy, and a young Black woman's life filtered through her sharp and curious eyes. Memorial Drive, a daughter's memoir. At age 19, Natasha Trethway had her world turned upside down when her former stepfather shot and killed her mother. Grieving and still new to adulthood, she confronted the twin poles of life and death in the aftermath of unimaginable trauma and now explores the way this experience lastingly shaped the artist she became. Pulitzer Prize winning poet Natasha Trethway explores this profound experience of pain, loss, and grief as an entry point into understanding the tragic course of her mother's life. The way her own life has been shaped by a legacy of fierce love and resilience. This is a luminous, urgent, and visceral memoir from one of our most important contemporary writers and thinkers. Let's never talk about this again, a memoir. 12-year-old Sarah enjoyed a G-rated existence in suburban New England, filled with over-the-top birthday cakes, revolutionary war reenactments, and nerdy word games invented by her prudish father, Ira. But Sarah's world changed for the icky when she discovered that Ira had been shielding her from the truth, that he was a campy sex writer who'd sold millions of books in multiple languages. For decades, the books remained an unspoken family secret until Ira developed early onset Alzheimer's disease and announced he'd be reviving his career with Sarah's help. In the cringeworthy, hilarious, and moving memoir, Sarah shares the profound experience of discovering new facets of her father, once as a child and again as an adult. Let's Never Talk About This Again is a must-read confessional from a woman who spent years trying to find humor in the perverse and optimism in the darkness and succeeded. The answer is reflections on my life. Since debuting as host of Jeopardy in 1984, Alex Trebek has been something like a family member to millions of television viewers, bringing entertainment and education into their homes five nights a week. The book combines illuminating personal anecdotes with Trebek's thoughts on a range of topics, including marriage, parenthood, education, success, spirituality, and philanthropy. 
Trebek also addresses the questions he gets asked most often by Jeopardy fans, his insights on legendary players, and his opinion of Will Ferrell's Saturday Night Live impersonation. This wise, charming, and inspiring book is further evidence why Trebek has long been considered one of the most beloved and respected figures in entertainment. Notes on the silencing. When the elite St. Paul School came under investigation, after excessive reports of sexual abuse on campus, Lucy Crawford, or Lacey Crawford, excuse me, thought she'd put behind her the assault she'd suffered decades before when she was 15. Still, when detective asked victims to come forward, she sent a note. With her criminal case filed, and she saw for the first time evidence that corroborated her memories. Here were depictions of the naive, hardworking girl she'd been, a chorister and debater, the daughter of a priest, and of the two senior athletes who assaulted her and were allowed to graduate with awards and of the faculty, doctors, and priests who had known about Crawford's assault and gone to great lengths to bury it. An insightful, mature, beautifully written memoir, Notes on a Silencing, is an arresting coming-of-age story that wrestles with an essential question for our time. What telling us of a survivor's story will finally force a remedy? Five Days, the Fiery Reckoning of an American City. When Freddie Gray was arrested for possessing an illegal knife in April 2015, he was, by eyewitness accounts that video evidence later confirmed, treated roughly as police loaded him into a vehicle. By the end of his trip in the police van, Gray was in a coma from which he would never recover. In the wake of a long history of police abuse in Baltimore, this killing felt like the final straw. It led to a week of protests, then five days described alternately as a riot or an uprising that sent this entire city on edge and caught the nation's attention. Moore, along with journalist Erica Green, tells the story of the Baltimore uprising both through his own observations and through the eyes of other Baltimoreans. Each shifting point of view contributes to an engrossing, cacophonous account of one of the most consequential moments in our recent history. The Fixed Stars, from a best-selling memoir, a thoughtful and provocative story of changing identity, complex sexuality, and enduring family relationships. At age 36, while serving on a jury, author Molly Weisenberg found herself drawn to a female attorney she hardly knew. Married to a man for nearly a decade and mother to a toddler, Weisenberg tried to return to her life as she knew it, but something inside her changed irrevocably. Instead, she would discover that the trajectory of our lives is rarely as smooth or as logical as we'd like to believe. The Fixed Stars is a taut, electrifying memoir, exploring timely and timeless questions about desire, identity, and the limits and possibilities of family. All right, true, true crime lovers. We have unspeakable acts, true tales of crime, murder, deceit, and obsession. Sarah Weinman brings together an exemplary collection of recent true crime tales. She calls together some of the most refreshing and exciting contemporary journalists and chroniclers of crime working today. Michelle Dean's Dee Dee Wanted Her Daughter to Be Sick went viral when it first published and is the basis for the TV show, The Act. And Pamela Koloff's The Reckoning is the gold standard for forensic journalism. There are 13 pieces in all, and as a collection, they showcase writing about true crime across the broadest possible spectrum, while also reflecting what makes crime stories so transfixing and irresistible to the modern reader. The Perfect Father, the true story of Chris Watts, is all family and a shocking murder. In the early morning hours of August 13th, 2018, Shannon Watts was dropped off at home by a colleague after returning from a business trip. It was the last time anyone would see her alive. By the next day, Shannon and her two young daughters had been reported missing, and her husband, Chris Watts, was appearing on the local news pleading for his family's safe return. But Chris already knew that he would never see his family again. In this first major account of the case, best-selling author and journalist John Glatt reveals the truth behind the tragedy and constructs a chilling portrait of one of the most, shockingly, most shocking family annihilator cases of the 21st century. I Got a Monster, The Rise and Fall of America's Most Corrupt Police Squad. When Baltimore Police Sergeant Wayne Jenkins said he had a monster, he meant he had found a big time drug dealer, one that he wanted to rob. This is a story of Jenkins and the Gun Trace Task Force, a super group of dirty detectives who exploited some of America's greatest problems, guns, drugs, toxic masculinity, and hypersegregation. In the upside down world of the GTTF, cops were robbers and drug dealers were the perfect victims because no one believed them. When the federal government finally arrested the GTTF for robbery and racketeering in 2017, the stories of victims began to come out. 
revealing a vast criminal enterprise operating within the Baltimore Police Department. I Got a Monster is the shocking story of the rise and fall of one of the most corrupt cops in America, from Baynard Woods and Brandon Soderbergh. Ripped from the headlines, the shocking true stories behind the movie's most memorable crimes. So what's the reality behind Psycho, Badlands, The Hills Have Eyes, A Place in the Sun, Arsenic and Old Lace, and Dirty Harry? How much did tabloid, how did such tabloid-ready killers as Bonnie and Clyde, Body Snatchers Burke and Hare, Nurse Slayer Richard Speck, and Leopold and Loeb exert their power on the public imagination and become the stuff of movie lore? In this collection of revelatory essays, true crime historian Harold Schechter takes a fascinating trip down the crossroads of fact and fiction to reveal the sensational real-life stories that are more shocking, taboo, and fantastic than even the most imaginative screenwriter can dream up. And we've got history. All of the Lionheart, Lost Love, Imperial Spies, and One Woman's Journey into the Heart of Africa. From the Edgar nominated author of the best-selling Mrs. Sherlock Holmes comes the true story of a woman's quest to Africa in the 1900s to find her missing fiance and the adventure that ensues. In 1910, Olive McLeod, a 30-year-old red-headed Scottish aristocrat, received word that her fiance, the famous naturalist Boyd, Boyd Alexander, was missing in Africa, so she went to find him. All the Lionheart is the thrilling true story of her astonishing journey. Drawing on Olive's own letters and secret diaries, All of the Lionheart is a love story that defies all boundaries to the backdrop of a beautiful, unconquerable Africa. The Indomitable Florence Finch. When Florence Finch died at the age of 101, few of her Ithaca, New York neighbors knew that this unassuming Filipina native was a Presidential Medal of Freedom recipient whose courage and sacrifice were unsurpassed in the Pacific War against Japan. Long accustomed to keeping her secrets close in service of the Allies, she waited 50 years to reveal the story of those dramatic and harrowing days to her own children. Florence was an unlikely, unlikely warrior. She fell in love with a dashing American naval intelligence agent, Charles Bing Smith. In the wake of Bing's sudden death in battle, Florence transformed from a mild-mannered young wife into a fervent resistant fighter. In constant peril of arrest and execution, Florence fought to save others even as the Japanese police closed in. The indomitable Florence Finch is the story of the transcendent bravery of a woman who belongs in America's pantheon of war heroes. The Deviant's War. In 1957, Frank Kamini, a rising astronomer working for the U.S. De Defense Department in Hawaii, received a summons to report immediately to Washington, D.C., the Pentagon had reason to believe he was a homosexual, and after a series of humiliating interviews, many, like countless gay men and women before him, was promptly dismissed from his government job. Unlike many others, though, he fought back. Based on firsthand accounts, recently declassified FBI records, and 40,000 personal documents, Eric Cervini's The Deviant's War unfolds over the course of the 1960s as the Managing Society of Washington the group committee founded, became the first organization to protest the systemic persecution of gay federal employees. This is a story of America and Washington at a cultural and sexual crossroads of shocking Byzantine public battles with Congress, of FBI informants, murder, betrayal, sex, love, and ultimately victory. 12 Seconds of Silence is the remarkable lost story of how a ragtag group of American scientists overcame one of the toughest problems of World War II, shooting things out of the sky. For fans of Eric Larson and Ben McIntyre, set amidst the fog of espionage, dueling spies, and the dawn of an age when science would determine the fate of the world, 12 Seconds of Silence is a tribute to the extraordinary wartime mobilization of American science and the ultimate candy story. Chasing Chopin, a musical journey across three centuries, four countries, and a half dozen revolutions. The Frederick Chopin Annick Lafarge presents here is not the melancholy, sickly, romantic figure so often portrayed. The artist she discovered is instead a purely independent spirit, an innovator who created a new musical language, a blazing teacher, and a stalwart patriot during a time of revolution and exile. As part of her research into Chopin's world then and now, Lafarge visited piano makers, monuments, churches, and archives. She talked to scholars, jazz musicians, video game makers, software developers, music teachers, theater directors, and of course, dozens of pianists. 
The result is extraordinary, an engrossing, page-turning work of musical discovery and an artful portrayal of a man whose work and life continue to inspire artists and cultural innovators in astonishing ways. Cult Writers is an essential addition to any book lover's library, as well as an entertaining introduction to our weird and wonderful world of literature, featuring 50 writers, including Octavia e. Butler, Julio, Julio Cortazar, Ralph Ellison, Angela Carter, and many more. Pure Invention, How Japan's Pop Culture Conquered the World, The Walkman, Karaoke, Pikachu, Pac-Man, Akira, Emoji, We've all fallen in love with one or another of Japan's pop culture creations, from the techie to the wild to the super kawaii. But as Japanese media veteran Matt Alt proves in this brilliant investigation of Tokyo's pop fantasy complex, we don't know the half of it. Japan's toys, gadgets, and imaginary worlds didn't merely entertain. They profoundly transformed the way we live. Through the stories of an indelible group of artists, geniuses, and oddballs, her invention reveals how Japanese ingenuity remade global culture and may have created modern, modern life as we know it. It's Japan's world. We're just gaming, texting, singing, and dreaming in it. Houseplant Party. In Houseplant Party, you'll discover dozens of amazing, easy to care for houseplants that are a perfect fit for your desk, windowsill, bedside table, or bathroom vanity. But Houseplant Party isn't just about taking care of plants. It's also about decorating with them featuring step-by-step -step instructions for planters and displays. One Plank Woodworking Projects is a clearly illustrated practical guide to building fabulously functional household projects from a single plank of wood. Accomplished woodworker and author Andy Standing demonstrates 20 varied projects for the home, office, or garden, including stylish bookends, a personalized laptop tray, an elegant wine rack, closet shelving, and more. A Table for Friends, The Art of Cooking for Two or Twenty. Drawing on years of cooking for more people than it ever seems possible to squeeze into her kitchen, Sunday Times columnist and cookery author, Sky McAlpine, shares the secrets to her stylish and relaxed way of hosting, setting you up for success whether you're cooking for two or 20. This healthy Indian vegetarian is a celebration of Indian food at its best, fresh, vibrant, and supremely delicious. With over 80 recipes that vegetarian and even the most dedicated of meat eaters will enjoy, Chetna shows just how creative you can be with even the most humble vegetable. This book is packed with flavor and innovative ideas, yet easy and accessible for home cooks. The Last Stargazers, the enduring story of astronomy's vanishing explorers. Humans from the earliest civilizations were spellbound by the night sky, craning their necks each night. They used the stars to orient themselves in the large, strange world around them. Stargazing is a pursuit that continues to fascinate us. From Copernicus to Carl Sagan, astronomers throughout history have spent their lives trying to answer the biggest questions in the universe. Now, award-winning astronomer Emily Levesque shares the stories of modern-day stargazers, the people willing to adventure across high mountaintops and to some of the most remote corners of the planet, all in the name of science. Decoding your cat, the ultimate experts explain common cat behaviors and reveal how to prevent or change unwanted ones. In the United States, one of the predominant reasons that owners abandon or give up their pets, often leading to euthanasia, is because of unwanted behaviors. This is the first book of its kind to provide an in-depth understanding of the underlying reasons for a cat's problem behavior. Decoding Your Cat empowers owners to provide a home environment that is safe, happy, and functional, to identify and seek treatment for medical health problems, to understand how to deal with unwanted behaviors, and in general, to help cats live longer and fuller lives. And You Ought to Do a Story About Me, Addiction, an Unlikely Friendship, and the Endless Quest for Redemption. In 1990, while covering a story about homelessness for the New Orleans Times-Picayune, Ted Jackson encountered a homeless man sleeping under a bridge. After snapping a photo, Jackson woke the man. Pointing to the daily newspaper by his feet, the homeless stranger looked the photojournalist in the eye and said, you ought to do a story about me. When Ted asked why, he was stunned by the answer. Because, he said, I've played in three Super Bowls. 
That chance meeting was the start of Ted's 30-year relationship with Jackie Wallace, a former NFL star who rose to the pinnacle of fame and fortune only to crash and lose it all. Tragic and triumphant, inspiring and unexpected, You Want to Do a Story About Me offers a rare glimpse into the precarious world of homelessness and the lingering impact of his systemic racism and poverty on the lives of New Orleans citizens. Lyrical and evocative, Ted's account is pure, singular, and ambitious, a timeless tale about loss, redemption, and hope in their multifarious forms. Little Wonder, the fabulous story of Lottie Dodd, the world's first female sports superstar. Lottie Dodd was a truly extraordinary sports figure who blazed trails of glory in the late 19th and earliest 20th century. Dodd won Wimbledon five times and did so for the first time in 1887 at the ludicrously young age of 15. After she grew bored with competitive tennis, she moved on and excelled in a myriad of other sports. She became a leading ice skater and tobogganist, a mountaineer, an endurance bicyclist, a hockey player, a British golf champion, and an Olympic silver medalist in archery. Paving the way for the likes of Billie Jean King, Serena Williams, and other top female athletes of today, Dodd accepted no limits, no glass ceilings, and always refused to compromise. Little Wonder brings this remarkable woman's story to life, contextualizing it against a backdrop of rapid social change and tectonic shifts in the status of women in society. And we've got one more. Disability visibility. First person stories from the 21st century. One in five people in the United States lives with a disability. Some disabilities are visible, others less apparent, but all are underrepresented in media and popular culture. Now, just in time for the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act, activist Alice Wong brings together this urgent galvanizing collection of contemporary essays by disabled people. It celebrates and documents disability culture in the now. It looks to the future and the past with hope and love. All right. So hello, everyone. I'm ready to tell you about 20 graphic novel titles coming to the library in the next few months. Um, I want to apologize in advance to the creators whose names I am probably about to say completely wrong. Um, before we start with the book, I have this great quote from Jonathan Mabry's Wolverine and Do More. Just a fun little thing. Um, I hope you'll hear a few things you want to add to your to-read list and care to join us. So this time I decided to go chronologically. First up is Lady Killer from Dark Horse Books out June 2nd. Josie Schuler is a picture-perfect homemaker, wife, and mother, but she's also a ruthless killer. She balances cheerful domestic bliss with coldly efficient assassinations. From the World's Fair in Seattle to the beaches of Florida, Josie tries to keep her perfect family alive in a blood-stained new vision of the American dream. Joelle Jones became an overnight sensation with this gory mid-century series, and this oversized hardcover collects the original series co-written by Jones's longtime collaborator, Jamie S. Rich, as well as the follow-up, which she both wrote and drew solo. Um, it also includes sketchbooks from both series and previously unpublished art. Next is Ruby Falls, also a Dark Horse book, but from their Burger Books imprint, um, and it's out June 9th. Kill Time Till Time Kills You. This is a neo-noir tale of love, memory, and murder from a legendary writer, Anna Senti, and rising Italian artist, Flavia Biondi, making her American Comics debut. Ruby Falls is a sleepy town, but sleep brings nightmares, and 20-something Lana is about to wake up in the middle of her hometown's biggest secret, the disappearance of Betty Gallagher, who was infamous for her progressive ways during the mobster ruled heyday of his old mining town. The dim details of this cold case murder are trapped in the mind of her grandmother, Clara, who suffers from dementia. When Clara starts to share these deeply buried, violent memories with her, Lana is hooked. She becomes obsessed with cracking the case, even if it means slapping the minds of everyone involved, splintering the peaceful town, and putting herself in grave danger. Ruby Falls is a mystery woven through three generations of women and hinging on their individual intertwined fights for freedom. We have Tiananmen 1989, Our Shattered Hopes from IDW Publishing, and it's out June 16th, and follows the story of China's infamous June 4th incident, otherwise known as the Tiananmen Square Massacre, from the firsthand account of a young sociology teacher who witnessed it all. Over 30 years ago, on April 15th, 1989, the occupation of Tiananmen Square began. 
as tens of thousands of students and concerned Chinese citizens took to the streets demanding political reform, the fate of China's communist system was unknown. When reports of soldiers marching into Beijing as the protests reverberated across Western airways, the world didn't know what to expect. Lun Zhang was a young sociology teacher then in charge of management and safety service for the protests. Now in this powerful graphic novel, Zhang pairs with French journalist and Asia specialist Adrian Gombo to share his unvarnished memory of this crucial moment in world history for the first time. Providing comprehensive coverage of the 1989 protests that ended in bloodshed and drew global scrutiny and includes context for these explosive events, sympathetically depicting a world of discontented, idealistic, activist Chinese youth rarely portrayed in Western media. Many voices and viewpoints are on display from Western journalists to Chinese administrators. We'll be excited for this one. Ascender Volume 2, The Dead Sea from Image Comics is out June 30th. Uh, it's the hit fantasy series powerhouse creative team, Jeff Lemire and Dustin Nguyen. And after a bruising escape attempt from the planet Samson, Andy finds himself in the clutches of the militia, which means the murderous mother can't be far behind. Meanwhile, Mila has booked passage on a ship piloted by none other than the irascible Captain Telsa. And while vampires may rule this strange galaxy, they're no match for Kanto the Bloodscraper, the most badass vampire hunter in the universe. For manga fans, Berserker Volume 5 Deluxe Edition is a Dark Horse manga title out July 7th. Uh, Taro Mira's epic adult fantasy horror series is an international sensation. Uh, Griffith, the mutilated leader of the Band of the Hawk Mercenaries, offers up his command to the demon lords of the God Hand in exchange for a rebirth into beauty and terrible power. But the Hawk's berserker champion, Guts, will take on perdition itself to save his lover, Casca, from the profane violations that only hell can offer. Uh, this collects volumes 13 through 15 and includes Berserk Prototype, the original Berserk submission story. Um, if you're interested in this series, we have ordered the previous volumes as well. Another book for July 7th is Vampire State Building from Ablaze, the newest horror series from the artist of The Walking Dead, Charlie Adler. Uh, get ready to be bitten from the first full color page. Terry Fisher is a young soldier on the verge of being sent away for active military duty and meet his friends at the top of the Empire State Building for a farewell. But suddenly, a legion of vampires attacks the skyscraper and massacres its occupants. Hounded in the hunt two floors that have become a deadly trap, Terry must take decisive action to save himself, his friends, and the city of New York. Before the army of abominations and the terrible vampire god within, who's been walled in the building since its construction, spill into the city. Collecting the hit four-issue series into one handsome hardcover volume and includes behind-the-scenes material, cover gallery, sketches, designs, and more. We have Grateful Dead Origins from Z2 Comics, our third book on July 7th. Uh, the Grateful Dead are one of the most influential rock and roll bands of all times, but every story has a start. The Grateful Dead Origins takes an in-depth and personal look at the formation of one of the most important American rock bands of all time. Exploring the early days of Jerry Garcia, Phil Lesh, Bob Weir, Pig Penn, Bill Kreutzmann, and Mickey Hart, and their transition from being a bar cover band to one of the greatest sounds in history. The Grateful Dead origin showcases the beginning of the band through their early 1960s San Francisco Ashbury era while telling a personal tale of the highs and lows of the tightly knit community that would grow around them, culminating in their historic performance at Woodstock. Just one more show on their legendary road trip that would soon follow. This official graphic novel will also feature in an accompanying album of rare Grateful Dead music. And this is one I'm actually looking forward to, Folklords from Boom Studios out July 14th. Uh, in a world of magic and monsters, Ansel is an outsider haunted by visions of our world, well-pressed suits and modern technology, and he'll risk everything to find the mysterious folklords who can reveal the truth about his existence. When it comes time for him to go on his quest, Ansel decides to seek out the mysterious folklords, hoping they can explain his visions. But looking for the folklore is strictly forbidden, punishable by death. How much is Ansel willing to risk to find out about the world he has never truly belonged in? Uh, Eisner Award-nominated writer Matt Kent teams with acclaimed artist Matt Smith uh, for an adventure that blurs the lines of fantasy and reality. 
And here we have Undiscovered Country Volume 1, also out July. Um, an image comics smash hit series written by New York Times bestselling writer Scott Snyder and Charles Soleil and Eisner Award-winning colorist Matt, Matt Wilson. In Undiscovered Country, readers will journey into a known region that was once the United States of America, a mysterious land that has been literally walled off from the rest of the world for well over a century. Two small expeditions enter the former U.S. simultaneously, one from the east, one from the west, and journey inward each seeking their own form of truth as they struggle to survive in this strange and deadly long country. If Jeff Lemire was my theme in the last book buzz, vampires is my theme in this one. Volume 1, Sins of the Father, is another image book out July 14th, featuring the show-stopping talents of this series artist, Jason Sean Alexander, and the writer behind such hit shows as Wu-Tang and American Saga, Marvel's Runaways, and Stars' American Gods, Rodney Barnes. Uh, it's when a small-town beat cop comes home to bury his murdered father, the revered Philadelphia detective James Sangster Sr. He begins to unravel a mystery that leads him down a path of horrors and shakes his beliefs to the core. The city that was once the symbol of liberty and freedom has fallen play, prey to corruption, poverty, unemployment, brutality, and vampires. But the mystery goes even further when Jimmy's investigation leads him to uncover the source of the outbreak is long thought dead president of the United States, John Adams, a man secretly biding his time as he builds an undead army to start a new and bloodier American revolution. There's a reason they coined the phrase, you can't go home. Welcome to Philadelphia. Another one I'm excited for, uh, The Cloven, book one from Fantagraphics out August 4th. Uh, the author of the number one New York Times bestseller, The Art of Racing in the Rain, Garth Stein, um, and then the co-creator of Stumptown, that's a hit series on ABC right now, Matthew Southworth, team up for an action-packed coming-of-age story about a mutant from the Pacific Northwest. The Cloven Book One stars James Tucker, the most successful genetically modified human organism ever created. Conceived in a privately financed top-secret laboratory on Washington's gates, Bashan Island, Tucker is a cross between a human and a goat, a cloven. Known to his friends as Tuck, all he wants to do is live a normal life as a university student. Everything is going fine until he shows a girl his hopes. Moody and mysterious and atmospheric as a fever dream, the cloven book one follows Tuck's breakneck journey across the Pacific Northwest as he searches for his true home out there somewhere. Book one of a raucous, funny, fast-moving and dynamic series of graphic novels by two best-selling and critically acclaimed storytellers. Um, the Cloven Book One features a special full-color, four-page, fold-out spread and full-color illustrations throughout. Um, I actually watched these guys talk about the book and show that amazing pull-out spread um, at BookConline a few weeks ago, so I'm looking forward to seeing it in person. Fans of The Walking Dead, here is The Walking Dead, The Alien from Image Comics coming out on August 4th originally only available on panelsyndicate.com and now we're getting a hardcover version that features a story firmly set in the Walking Dead comic book continuity but by Brian K. Vaughn and Marcos Martin. It's actually the first Walking Dead comic set outside of the U.S. and not penned by the series creator Robert Kirkman and it gives fans the story of Rick Grimes' younger brother Jeffrey. Next up for August 4th is the Mueller Report from IDW Publishing. It's the greatest whodunit of our time or a new low for presidential harassment. Shannon Wheeler, Eisner Award-winning New York cartoonist and veteran journalist Steve Doon turn their critical eye on the Mueller Report, a comprehensive, understandable, and readable graphic novel version of the book Every Patriot Means. Fight the spins viewing forth from both parties and political pulpits and check out this graphic novel that brings a 400-page legal document down to size. Wheeler and Dune in graphic form bring to life scenes detailed in the report. The Mueller report graphic girl style from classic private detective yarns, complete with a villainous rogues gallery, nail-biting cliffhangers, and a lone lawman standing proud against the wave of crime. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you may tweet in anger, but most importantly, you will be reading the report for yourself. Pulp from Image Comics, the final August 4th book, and a gorgeous original graphic novel from the best-selling creators of Killer Be Killed, My Heroes Have Always Been Junkies, and the Criminal series, 
Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. Max Winters, a pulp writer in the 1930s, finds himself drawn into a story not unlike the tales he churns out at five cents a word. Tales of a Wild West law dispensing justice with a six gun. But will Max be able to do the same when pursued by bank robbers, Nazi spies, and enemies from his past? One part thriller, one part meditation on a life of violence, Pulp is unlike anything the award-winning team of Brubaker and Phillips have done. A celebration of pulp fiction set in a world on the brain. This one looks so cool. The Flapper Queens from Fantagraphics will be out August 18th. It celebrates the Flapper Queens in a gorgeous collection of full-color comic strips. In addition to featuring the more well-known cartoonists of the era, such as Ethel Hayes and Nell Brinkley, Eisner Award-winning Trina Robbins introduces you to Eleanor Shore, who started career in the teens as a flowery Art Nouveau Mel Brinkley imitator, but by the 20s was drawing bold and outrageous Art Deco illustrations. Uh, Edith Stevens, who chronicled the fashion trends, hairstyles, and social manners of the 20s and 30s in the pages of the Boston Globe, and Virginia Huguet, possibly the flappiest of the flapper queens, whose girls with their angular elbows and knees seem to always exist in a euphoric state of Charleston. Probably a familiar character for some. Punisher Soviet from Marvel out August 20. Garth Ennis returns to the world of the Punisher. A dozen Russian mobsters lay dead at Frank Castle's feet. But he wasn't the one who pulled the trigger. You'd think the Punisher would celebrate. But if you know Frank, you'll know that this unexpected turn of events just stirs up more questions. Who is Valery Stepanovich? Why did he mow down a room full of mobsters? These are the questions Frank is going to answer and then decide if Valerie deserves his own punishment. But what will happen when these two criminal hunters come face to face? Seeds planted decades ago in Moscow and Afghanistan are about to bloom bloody in New York City in an all new tale by the writer who gets Frank Castle like no other. Another new edition from Hell Master Edition, also out August 25th from Top Shelf Productions, meet the notorious serial killer of all time, Jack the Ripper and meet the vast and vibrant communities of Victoria where his foul deeds gave birth to the modern era. In this remarkable new edition, the award-winning bestseller From Hell features astonishing colors by Eddie Campbell. Jack is back, and this time the blood is red. Experience five unsolved murders, two of the greatest creators in, comic his in the history of comics, one sprawling conspiracy, one metropolis on the brink of the 20th century, and one bloody-minded ripper ushering London into the modern age of terror. Next, Absolute Carnage Omnibus, another Marvel book, and will be out September 8th. The lethal Cletus Cassidy casts his symbiotic tendrils across the Marvel universe. Carnage is targeting everyone who has ever worn a symbiote. And that's a lot of potential victims, even for him. Naturally, Cassidy's new reign of terror spells misery for Spider-Man and Venom, but the devastation is felt by Miles Morales, the Avengers, Deadpool, Ghost Rider, the Immortal Hulk, and more. But what is Cassidy's horrific endgame? Experience a new level of crazy as Carnage runs wild. Atlas at War from Dead Reckoning, which is the graphic print of the Naval Institute Press, collects 50 hard-hitting stories from Atlas Comics, the company that became Marvel Comics and published more war titles than anyone in the industry between the years 1951 and 1960. Comics historian Dr. Michael J. Vasayo has chosen the best of the best, many of which are coming back into print for the first time, from 16 different Atlas War titles and featuring the artwork of 20 different artists, giants of the genre, including Russ Heath, John Severin, Jerry Robinson, Steve Ditko, Jack Kirby, each page has been meticulously restored from its first printing by comic art restorer Alan Harvey. Atlas at War covers the brutal pre-code period where graphic depictions of war action were rendered by artists who were World War II veterans themselves, as well as the post-code period where code restrictions forced creators to tell stories without graphic violence but produce some of the most beautiful comic art in, of the genre. In addition to the artists, stories cover all aspects of war from famous campaigns, weaponry, and personal soldier stories to political topics, Nazi atrocities, and even one story tinged with pre-code horror. Often overlooked in favor of its competitors, 
Atlas at War will finally show that Atlas's war titles were second to no one. And certainly not least, Batman Curse of the White Knight from DC Comics Black Label will be out September 15th. Ancient curses are awoken and timeless secrets are revealed in this Eisner Award nominated and explosive sequel to the critically acclaimed blockbuster Batman White Knight from writer-artist Sean Murphy. The Joker recruits Azrael to help him expose a shocking secret about the waning family's legacy and run Gotham City into the ground. As Batman rushes to protect the city and his loved ones from danger, the mystery of his ancestry unravels and Batman begins to question everything he thought he knew about himself and his place in Gotham. With Gotham City's identity and institutions in the balance, Barbara Gordon decides to take matters into her own hands. But will her rogue actions play right into Joker's plans? After tragedy strikes, Renee Montoya steps into the fray to lead the GTO and restore order to the chaos that is quickly consuming Gotham City. Lightning quick pacing and an all-star cast of Gotham's heaviest hitters will keep you on the edge of your seat until the breathtaking finale of this second installment of the White Knight Saga. Thank you for listening. And if you have any other titles you'd like to see or have questions, feel free to email me or submit requests through the library catalog. And I will turn it back over to Betty for some closing remarks. All right. Thank you all for attending. We'll be sending out a link to the YouTube video uh, tomorrow. Once we've got it uploaded, we'll also be sending out a list of all the titles we talked about in case you missed something. Um, please check out our catalog for new books uh, and go to our website for summer reading uh, information for both the challenge and programs. And uh, we hope to see you at curbside soon. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>